Hey guys, welcome to another video and today I have another helper with me with uh, my oldest son Ilian behind the camera so thanks for that and we're going to test the uh, Smart Summon feature so we are here at a parking lot because Smart Summon only works at parking lots and uh, there's not a lot of traffic at the moment so we have uh, basically free reign to be able to test it Right, so the first test we are going to do, the car is parked there. I'm here at exactly 6 meters away from the car, so this should be the limit where I can actually test it. And I want the car to back out to me so I can basically step in as if I were a passenger. Um, so for that we're going to take the app. And uh, we'll use Summon here. So it's connecting to the vehicle right now. And next to the forward and reverse, we now have Smart Summon. So if I do Smart Summon, I take my position here, I'm going to adjust it a little bit, see if I can zoom in a little bit, nope. This is the maximum, so I'm going to back out to my position here. And then I'm going to try to summon the car. So it says preparing to summon. We'll wait a little bit, the car is still not reacting. And now we get the error message that the key fob is not within range of the vehicle. So uh, that's one of the first issues that we encountered. That is the fact that uh, we need to use the key fob. Right? So the key fob in essence needs to be within the range of the car to open the doors. Which is not 6 meters. It's about 1 meter around the car. So that makes it utterly useless in the first place. So what we need to do is I'm going to put, to, to get around this, I'm going to put the key fob on the windshield. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so let's try that again. So I'm going to uh, summon, connect to the vehicle, smart summon, let's back up a little bit here. Okay, same position like right here, maybe a little bit like that, right. and then it's going to prepare to summon, the car is closing the mirrors or folding the mirrors, it is reacting somehow, and it is backing out, whoa, going the wrong way, turning the wheels, waiting for phone to come back within range, so now we are at about 5 meters, but it's still not working, so I'm going to go a little bit closer. It's going the wrong way. Waiting for phone to come back into range. So it is going to turn the other way and then come to me, apparently. Okay. Okay, summon complete. So that was uh, the first test. Didn't go as planned. I wanted to, it to back out to me. Maybe I should have pulled it, pulled it out the other way. Uh, I don't know. But uh, let's continue to the next one. So the second test I want to do is my car is parked over there. And if you follow me, right, there's uh, a little bit in the way there. So I want the car to maneuver next to it and I want to have it stop right over there. So again, we're going to uh, summon the car. Yeah, keep focus on the car please. Connecting to the vehicle. So right now, so here you see, right, the car is more or less there. I'm going to summon it to that location which is less than 20 meters. It already says move pin closer to the vehicle. So. It needs to be within that circle, apparently. And uh, let's go to the target and let's see what Summon does. I'm going to stay well within range this time. Wheels are turning, but not much is happening. Waiting for the phone to come back within range. Okay, now it's going, it's going. Slowing down for intersection, it says. Waiting for the phone to come back into range. 
We need to move out of the way, Ilian. So it is moving, it is moving. It probably would hit the car in that other uh, parking lot. But it is going more or less to where we wanted it to be. Oh, it is seeing that it is taking a wrong turn there and adjusting, so that's good. The wheel is going crazy inside, but uh, it is doing what it is supposed to be doing. Waiting for the phone to come back in range, so we're going to go closer again. And summon is complete. So yeah, this is uh, another example. Summon worked, kind of, but they have to be really close to the car. The phone is constantly out of range, so for me it's not really usable at this point. But let's see if we can find another use case and try to see what the car attempts to do in that case. Right, so I wanted to try another uh, scenario and uh, something funny happened. Um, so right here we are parked and I wanted to go over there. And where you can see there's a divider between the, the different parking spaces. And what uh, the Tesla now does is it doesn't care at all about those dividers. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. And uh, probably it will detect it once it will drive there. But unfortunately it is too far away to actually uh, attempt this, uh, this maneuver. But one thing that uh, is true here is that Tesla, it uses OpenStreetMap. And uh, I know that this parking lot has not yet been mapped. So later on today, I will start mapping this parking lot. And then uh, maybe tomorrow, I don't know how long it takes before the Tesla actually picks it up. I will try it again and see if we get some improvements on Smart Summon. So uh, make sure to subscribe to this video and uh, click that bell icon so you get notified when I upload the next one. That will hopefully get a better Smart Summon on this parking lot. But in the meantime, there's still a few other scenarios that we are going to test. Uh, so the next test that I'm going to do, and the key fob is uh, still in the car at the moment, uh, is I'm going to let the car do the turn and I'm going to let it move over a couple of parking spaces. Shouldn't be too hard, but let's see if it can do it within 20 meters or whether it takes more time to actually complete that. So let's again take summon here, connecting to the vehicle. And I will put it like, uh, let's say here. Oh, that's a very peculiar scenario. Let me take a screenshot so you guys can see what it actually attempts to do. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's really weird. It's going to drive in a loop up and then all the way back here. Um, so let's see if I can change that a little bit. Have it recalculate. No, it is going to go, oh yeah, now it has changed, okay. So let's hope we are close enough. Go to target, preparing to summon, the car is reacting, that's good. It is starting to move. Slowing down for intersection, once again. It is using the blinker to turn, that's not too bad. It is moving, it is moving, really slow, it would annoy the crap out of anybody that is trying to use the parking lot at the moment. So it is creeping forward, going around us, still moving, waiting for paths to clear. So it detected that we were kind of in the way and then it decided, well no, we're clear. Oh, it speeds up all of a sudden. And then we get the message, maximum distance reached. So yeah, even that small of a distance, the car can still not handle it. So again, a scenario where I would maybe want to use it for the car to come and pick me up at the entrance of the store. Even perhaps when it's raining, I don't want to get wet. Uh, 
it's not possible in Europe because of the regulations that we need to be this close to the car and the car can only drive 20 meters. Okay, so one final test that we have here is I'm parking that spot and I want to move to the other side and I want the car to come and pick me up, for example. Now, that should be roughly about 20 meters there. Um, but the car needs to get around this little hump here, uh, which currently, as I showed earlier, uh, it is not detecting in the first path prediction, but maybe it will do it as soon as the car starts moving. So I'm going to summon the car again, like this, and then I'm going to put the destination like here, which is still within the circle. It looks like the path is saying it's going around it, but um, let's see how it does. So it's preparing to summon. We have to walk with the car for this one uh, to make sure that it actually is, uh, the phone is still within range. And yeah, watch out, waiting for pedestrian. I got a message that says waiting for pedestrian, which is awesome. Waiting for part to clear. He's taking it, He's taking it. crossing the parking lot but that's probably because it doesn't know where the aisles are it is moving we need to stay close with the car waiting for phone to come back within range I mean come on so the phone range that goes in and out and it is really, really sketchy. Still going, it's going straight on instead of turning. Yeah, still going. Ah. And now we have the maximum distance reached on uh, the summon. So apparently it was more than 20 meters and again, the car just stops dead in its tracks. So. All right, time for a conclusion about Smart Summon. So what do I think? Well, if it works, it is really impressive at what it does, but there are, for me, three problems. Problem number one is something that Tesla can fix, and that is that currently, on my car at least, I still need to use the key fob within range of detection, which is about one meter around the car. Um, from European regulations, we can be six meters from the car, uh, but yeah, with the key fob, we can only be one meter from the car. So you need to be to have the key fob inside the car or put it somewhere on the car. Um, and by that time that you've done that, well, you basically can step in and uh, do it yourself or use the regular summon if somebody's uh, parked too close to you, you can just drive it straight back, which is a lot easier and uh, quicker to do. So that's uh, the first problem. The second problem is of course uh, the UN ECE regulations that say six meters away from the car and the car can only drive 20 meters. But if the car needs to back out and drive forward, those meters are added up. So it's not 20 meters distance that is going to travel. If it needs to back out for five meters first and then five meters forward again, you lose about half the possible distance of uh, travel. So, yeah, that's just uh, stupid. And uh, again, one of those regulations, especially since we can only use it on parking lots, right? Uh, that's private property and regulations should not apply to private property in general. But Apparently they do. Uh, I still have to dig into the specifics of those regulations to see if they really can apply to that. But this is the way that Tesla has currently implemented it. Um, and the third one is of course the GPS position. Uh, because it needs to detect your phone within that 6 meter range. It seems that the GPS on either my iPhone and or the car 
uh, is not accurate enough to be somewhere in the boundary so about four meters away you're fine five to six meters away you have to be lucky to get it working at all so yeah it's it's a nice party trick but it's nothing more than that it's nothing useful especially with the key fob situation so you can't even summon it from four meters away at the moment without first going to the car and placing the key fob on it so yeah i'd like to see that uh, change so tesla if you're listening uh, please update the system so it doesn't require the key fob anymore and just rely on the phone position and the phone connection um, another thing is that i'm not sure of is whether it uses wi-fi or Bluetooth I think it uses Wi-Fi because before I started testing my car was on the Wi-Fi hotspot but the hotspot was not connected I needed to enter the pin code and it didn't work someone would not connect to the car so with Wi-Fi there's an issue in underground parking lots where you don't have a proper signal again you won't be able to use smart summon or even regular summon in that case as I mentioned before in uh, one of my earlier videos so yeah, but that being said, if it works, it works great. But also, I've tested it yesterday evening, and then the weather was a little bit colder, and then I got messages like, someone is not ready, um, vision sim, uh, I thought it was vision system, temporary degraded, something like that. Um, so I'm getting all kinds of error messages, as soon as it gets colder, you're in the car, maybe the camera starts fucking up, stuff like that. So there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. I think even to the hardware to even come close to full self-drive. Um, but yeah, if it works, it's awesome. Um, so there you have it. I'm going to, as, as promised, I'm going to update the uh, parking lot now. I'm going to uh, put some parking aisles there so that the car better knows where it can drive. And then when uh, the car detects that, then I'll make another video to see if the different maneuvers are being um, more efficient uh, let me put it like that than they were today so make sure to stay tuned for that give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel using that button down there and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any future videos and for now thanks for watching see you guys next time bye bye